heard of SETI, and they know that SETI has not produced any results in terms of actually confirming we're not alone in the universe. But what if there was civilian scientists out there that take this question and actually probe space with their own conventional technology? To find out the answer to this question, I traveled to meet a friend, Jimmy Blanchett, in the middle of the desert where he had set up his own radio telescope array designed to send out messages in hopes for an intelligent response coming from extraterrestrials locally. I set up uh, you know, for the moon balance communication. Here. Very cool. Very cool. So you, you've been sending messages uh, through radio telescope that you've built mm -hmm. in your own backyard. Yep. Uh, and those messages reach the moon and you've been getting replies. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Uh, through different interactions, which are literally defying the laws of physics, you know, from, uh, from my experience, all the tests that I've done. Um, and also not only replies through radios, but uh, also sightings, right? So there's, there's been a lot of sightings uh, that were produced, you know, as a result of these transmissions. I can show you the antenna. Let me just show you the antenna. Uh, so see the sun is 208 as 39 degrees elevation, so I can uh, turn the antenna in that direction and you can see them outside. It's like a cannon, radio frequency cannon. So if you see here, you'll see that the antennas are directed towards the sun right now. And it's like a laser beam, the antennas are directional. So they, they broadcast, uh, you know, in the direction of the target. And so we're going to make a transmission towards the sun right now. Uh, using about a quarter of a million watts of power. And uh, that's how I've been doing the work, you know, for the last few years, really. And you'll see some cameras also that are set up here uh, to record the action in the sky. They are covered with a, you know, material to prevent the radiation from affecting them, right? Uh, like this Faraday bag, if you will. It's a Faraday material to, you know, keep the camera from being damaged by the intense radiation that uh, comes out of it. But I, I do have many uh, recordings of sightings and manifestations taking place in the sky. You know. UFOs. Yeah, yeah, like during transmissions and. What we find is that these uh, interactions contains information. I mean, that's been, you know, I demonstrated that in uh, several of my latest presentations, but the, the sightings are pretty amazing and, um, you know, cannot be explained by conventional means. And I have many of them have hours of material of that. So, so we'll towards the sun now, so we can go back inside and make a transmission and see. Uh, if the sun happens. replies? Well, <laughs> the sun does not reply, but there, there sometimes there are sightings during daytime as well. Right? So really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And we've got some wolves that have come to say hi. Yeah, yeah, they're beautiful ducks. <clears throat> Who are these wolves? Hey, guys. Oh, one shy of the camera. 
the different planets, right? We've got Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. We're gonna target Jupiter right now. It's 243.7 degrees, 36 elevation. 244 degrees is actually azimuth. 44, 36. I'm gonna. Uh, well, what message are we picking here? Uh, we'll pick a general message of the greet, uh, greeting message. Grat message of gratitude and a message to invite the civilizations to uh, help us out. Um, 243, so that's about here. There we go. And we see here the antenna moving. Oh, I'll go check it out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. This big antenna sits over top of our head and you've been using it, some form of this antenna for many years now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. When did you get into this? Uh, well, I started, uh, I have been an amateur radio operator, you know, since childhood for many, many years. Uh, one of my passion was to build antennas. So fast forward, I've done essentially, or, you know, practiced this hobby for many years uh, until 2013 when I heard about a, a modality called moon bounce communication. And I had never heard about it before and that modality consists in literally using huge antenna system with a lot of power to, to bounce radio wave off the surface of the moon and use the moon as a passive reflector essentially to establish contact here on Earth. I said, this is a great challenge. So I wanted to, technically, I love technical stuff. So I, I wanted to uh, get into it. So I built, I started building my own antenna system and getting the all equipment that was needed to do this. I did that and I built an antenna and a radio station. And in 2013, I had my first contact with essentially by, via moon bounce communication. So from there, I kept improving the system and kept building bigger and bigger antenna and with more power up until 2016 when I got, a, you know, a, a, an array of three antennas that, you know, was pretty big. It was very unique and it's not this one, but it was using the, some of the same antenna system. And, uh, and I, I, I wrote articles about it, scientific article about the system, which was published in a magazine in Europe. It was a unique triangular configuration of antenna system. And um, so I kept going, doing moon bounce, but then I had a really a powerful radio station by then. So uh, 2017, I fast forward, uh, I heard about the C, what people call C5 or, you know, uh, human initiated contact. And uh, I got, I was always felt attracted by it. Meditation. Which involves meditation, there are different modalities really. Uh, but a lot of it is about meditation and people use consciousness to uh, connect, you know, with civilizations. But there's also, some people use also some old radios and there's some, some technology that's out there. Anyway, I, I had seen many or watched uh, some videos uh, on the internet about people making contact and it was pretty impressive. So I was intrigued. Since I had all this, this large equipment, uh, this radio station, I said, why not using this radio station to send a message out there? to try to make contact. And so that's what I did. I created my own binary code message. Yeah. yeah. You're getting a bit of radio chatter there because you sent a message earlier and it... Yes, we, before we had this chat, minutes ago, uh, Darcy and I, we, we broadcasted the message towards the sun using a quarter of a million watts. 
uh, with a message. And so we'll talk about it in a minute, but yeah, yeah there's often Chat. interaction that or chatters that comes back. What you're doing, how does that differ from what SETI does, for example? <clears throat> from what I know from SETI, uh, not an expert with SETI, what I know is that they are more in a receiving mode. They, are, they have giant radio telescopes or uh, uh, dishes, if you will. And the, the reason, by the way, why I'm not using these sat kind of satellite dishes, dishes, if you will, is the dishes, right? The parabolic dishes. It, it's all about frequencies. When you go in a gigahertz, in a frequency gigahertz, it's more desirable to have these uh, parabolic dishes. Uh, when you go in lower in frequencies, then you use these kind of, we call Yagi antenna or directional Yagi antennas. Uh, but they are more in a receiving mode from what I understand. And so they pick a target and they listen and they look for an intelligent reply or an intelligent response or, you know, something that... Light years away. Light years away. What I'm doing is different. I am actually broadcasting messages of various kinds, uh, you know, and where I'm inviting the intelligence to manifest their presence. Um, and essentially, and I'm, I'm targeting, you know, planets in our solar system, targeting the sun, targeting the moon. And, you know, from, I mean, the evidence is overwhelming now that there's, there's a presence out there that's been interacting with humanity and now it's even, even the government admits that if you look at the Tic Tac video and the Nimitz, right? I mean, they're all there. They're here. They're yeah. not very far, right? And so the power I have here is, is more than enough to cover the solar system and, and be far beyond, but certainly the intelligence out there, they're going to they're gonna pick up that signal. So they're here. They're not very far. We don't need to, they, they, we don't need to have large equipment, you know, very powerful equipment to reach, to reach them. Um, even a simple handheld radio like this. I mean, if you look just the satellite at all, you know, around the Earth, they broadcast with milliwatts of power, fractions of watts. To deliver you TV and... To deliver to TV and communication podcasts. and GPS and all that in the fractions of watts. Even a, a handheld radio with four to eight watts like this, the signal will go far beyond the International Space Station, will actually reach the moon, and I can demonstrate that technically. Yeah. So. So they are here, we don't need a lot of equipment. It doesn't take a lot for humans to get their voice heard in space. Yes. Do you have any suspicions that maybe like some of these messages might be human that are coming back to you? Like people that are just <coughs> messing with you at all or something like that? Well, I, I, I want to mention here that I, in 2017, after I started this work, uh, I share this work with other experiencers. And, and so this contact modality, if we want to call it this way, has been now utilized worldwide by dozens of people. People were doing contact work and they've had all the very successful experiences. And they've shared their footage with me of sightings in the sky, interactions through the radios. And so these, again, these interactions that are happening now after our broadcast towards the sun. Um, and so, so it's, uh, it's not only me now. It's, it's been done now by many other folks who are using this contact modality worldwide. So if somebody is messing with me, well, they're, they're messing with people in Australia too, in New Zealand, and, right? It's, it's all over the place. Uh, and again, I have, I've done many tests, you know, technical tests to demonstrate that these interactions or if we look at the radios or it's a different type of interaction. That's not regular radio waves they are sending back all way. It's some other form of energy. Yeah, you said you put uh, a radio inside <coughs> of a microwave, which is a, a, a perfect Faraday cage. Yes, that's right. And so if, and if we have, let's say, and I have videos of that, you put three radios, for instance, set to the same frequency, one next to which other identical radios like we have here. And the intelligence will be able to trigger only one of them. And typically they will trigger the one that you've used to transmit. The message, so, which is impossible, because if it will be regular radio waves, all the radios should be going off at the same time, right? If you 
Yeah, the FM on radio that channel. on that channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, putting the radios in Faraday cage, the, the interaction still happens. So putting the radio in a Faraday cage, this is a microwave and the interaction is still ongoing. Despite the fact that the radio is contained in a Faraday cage, which does not let any radio waves going in or out. Even though it's contained and this cage are not letting radio, you know, wave in or out. So there are many uh, signs like that, that it's not natural, that it's that's beyond our level of technology that we can't really explain, but it's clearly uh, there. And, and these interactions, if we get on the radio also, are often combined with sightings in the sky, uh, amazing sighting in the sky. So that's this all, all, it's all experience really that, and uh, what I would advise people who are interested is to, serious people, to, to just go try it. It's, a, it's available to anyone. It's not uh, unique to, to me or a few other experiencers. It's available to anyone. It, I believe, truly believe it's part of the great awakening that's happening, of awakening of what's out there and what's possible to do. Clearly, I'm, I'm convinced they know way, 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 way more than what they, you know, they tell us. NASA. Right? NASA. Yeah, they, they way know more. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to try not even to get too much into this politics of what, you know, these things. I, I'm clearly, they've known this for decades. Government knows it. NASA knows this. And the public has been driven in the wrong direction and to look in the wrong direction on this. Again, uh, just what I mentioned earlier is very simple. A simple principle that a few watts of power power will go very far in space, far deeper than the inter International Space Station, meaning that we can get our voice heard in space easily. Um, I don't think people know that. There are many competing theories in regards to what is happening lately within Congress. People have 